RV people. So this video will take a look at the two week trip that my dad and I took to Colorado Springs this past summer. So for this trip we decided to stay at the Stone Park in Larkspur, which is nice to stay centrally located between Denver and Colorado Springs. The sites are nice, it's a typical Jellystone Park, a lot of kid friendly stuff. The only thing that uh, I would have wished we had more was green space for the dogs to go potty on. But uh, hey, the double rainbow really makes up for it, doesn't it? So for this trip, I was also tinkering with an Insta360 action cam. And so you'll see different perspectives like this one where it's a time warped um, tour of the park itself. I'll have a longer video that I could post so you guys can take a look. So my dad and I are both foodies, so wherever we go, we try to find some interesting places to eat. It's not always about food though, so uh, in Colorado Springs, we went to the airport restaurant, which you could find. Um, and the uniqueness of it is that you get to eat in a um, decommissioned uh, airplane, as you'll see here. The food itself was not nothing to write home about, but I think it was just a unique experience of um, eating inside of an airplane. We went to the Denver Biscuit Company, which is more so in downtown Colorado Springs, and this place was really good. So if we were to recommend somewhere to go, it would be here. Um, they basically had an entire menu that's crafted around biscuits that is really, really good. We went for breakfast, then I think the place turns over into a pizza joint at night, so definitely worth looking into as well. Alright, getting into what we did in Colorado Springs. Uh, first look here is at the Royal Gorge Route, uh, which is a railroad tour that comes out of Canyon City and goes west for about 45 minutes. So it's an hour and a half trip. You go there to and from um, your destination. You can really experience it in a couple of different ways. The first is you can sit inside, then you get the um, voiceover tour of everything that you're passing about the settlement back in the day along the gorge. The second way is what you're experiencing here is to be able to stand outside, enjoy the scenery live. All right, the next couple places that you see here are two of my favorites on the trip. Uh, I've started to really appreciate places and, and things that have great historical or cultural significance. And uh, the Air Force Academy is certainly one of them. Uh, it was kind of a last minute decision for us to go, but I think it turned out to be one of my um, uh, favorite things that we did in, in Colorado. As you see here, the first thing you get greeted with is the B-52 bomber. Uh, again, Diamond Lil, that's uh, up there on your right. Um, so there are a few main areas to, um, to the campus. First is this Air Warrior Combat Memorial, and uh, that was part of what was donated by the Class of 71. So the memorial does a great job of helping you understand the history behind the academy, what it's about, and what the Air Force stands for. But as you'll see in a little bit, what really got me in after doing a bit of research is to really learn about um, Robin Olds. From what I read, he seemed to have been a really dynamic leader at the Air Force and the Air Force Academy and I've included some um, screen grabs of the plaques that are actually located on the statue so that uh, you could take a look if you wish.
So from the memorial, we went to the visitor center, and the visitor center was a great place again to understand the life of uh, the cadets at the academy, all the way from a freshman to their senior year, and and really a lot of the uh, qualities and behaviors that are instilled in them throughout the career at the academy. One of the most unique architectural features at the academy is the chapel itself. However, when we went there, it was under renovation, so all we saw was a big box. So the other place that we found last minute but became a favorite of ours is the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Museum in Colorado Springs. So the museum opened in 2020 and it was designed to be very interactive and very experiential. As you just saw, when you register, you can enter your name and that gets tied into your visitor pass, which you get to keep after your visitation. And as you go throughout the museum and you look at artifacts like all the Olympic torches that you see here and you go through the interactive stations um, and all the experiences, they all get captured onto your visitor pass. After your visit, you could go back to the website and log in and all the records um, are kept there if you choose to want to go in and grab them. <laughs> that was that was creepy. <laughs> And the last two destinations that I'll show in this video are Garden of the Gods that you see here and Pikes Peak. Now I won't show too much here because these are two of the more popular destinations if you're ever in the Colorado Springs area and I do recommend you go visit. Garden of the Gods is actually free to use and it's a big big park with a lot of trails for day hikes that you can, you can easily go multiple times on a trip there. Um, you could also drive through because there is a whole loop that you could drive. I've included some footage of our drive here in this video, but the, the total length after we drove it was maybe uh, 25, half an hour. Um, and there are stops along the way to get to your hikes. And so it's definitely worth a visit. Beautiful scenery um, if you love to get outdoors.
At one end of the drive, as you exit, you get to go down to downtown Manitou Springs, which is a great downtown area, and is also where you could pick up the Pikes Peak train that'll take you to the next place that we went, which is Pikes Peak. On this day in Pikes Peak is actually when I learned that my father had a fear of heights. As we were driving up the mountain, he kept telling me to keep my hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, and stop looking at scenery <laughs> as he was on the edge of the road. So I'll leave you guys here with just some pictures that we took at the summit and also towards the end, um, our drive down from the summit that we used the Insta360 to capture just clips of it. Um, the camera is able to capture some really unique views, so if nothing else, uh, you can certainly get a good look at what it's like to drive down from Pikes Peak.